Hey, hey guys, we are back for another Crafting Live premiere today. I am here with my friend Angie from the Country Chic Cottage and we are crafting Christmas mugs. Um, this is a live YouTube premiere, which means that we are um, pre-recording this video, but we are chatting with you live in the comments. So if you have any questions or anything, please leave them. Um, we'd love to get to know you more and answer your questions there. Um, today we're going to be making these really cute Christmas mugs. Um, we're using uh, mugs from Heat Transfer Warehouse and we are using adhesive vinyl and transfer tape. And I think we are about ready to get started. We have all the information for the files and the materials and everything you need to craft in the description below. Um, and I'll go ahead and let Angie introduce herself as well. Yep, so I'm Angie Holden, and if you don't follow my YouTube channel, be sure to do that. So I have all kinds of cricket crafts, sublimation crafts, that type of thing, and I can't wait to make a couple of these mugs. Now I'm going to make two, Corey's going to make two, but there's like 12 total files, so you'll definitely want to check out the files because they are amazing. Super cute job, and Corey made those, so. <laughs> yes, they're all linked in the description below. All right, you ready for this? What machine are you using today? I'm going to use my Joy. So. Um, I like these are they're the mugs are super small so you can use them on any cricket machine so be sure to tell us in the comment section which machine you're going to use to craft along with us. Yeah, I'm going to be using my Cricut Explore 3 um, because it's the one that I had out. Um, I actually yesterday had all five of my machines out and plugged in because I was taking screenshots and I needed the little drop down to say the right machine. <laughs> so I have them all lined up on my desk. Wow. It was like a cricket <laughs> factory in here. Yeah, I've not had all mine plugged in at once definitely. <laughs> All right, let me see. Let me open up Cricut Design Space here. So we're going to go ahead and screenshot my Cricut Design Space so you can see what I'm doing. But give me just a second to get that set up. Can you believe we're crafting for Christmas, Angie? <laughs> I know. If you if y'all think it's early, just there's tons of cute mugs, even like hot cocoa mugs that I feel like are wintery. So <laughs> I think it's good. I know. I love. I don't know. This is like we're moving into my favorite time of year. And I'm going to do the eat, eat, drink, and be merry. And then I think the Christmas, Cocoa and Christmas movies. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to do, hold on just a second here. Oh, goodness. Sorry, y'all. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to be doing full of Christmas cheer and jingle juice. <laughs> 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 We've got a couple here that have a little bit of a cocktail sort of feel. I mean, I can drink jingle juice out of the mug, right? Like, that's okay. 100 <laughs> percent. All right. So what size are you going to make your image? So I, I haven't make... made any mugs. So do, have you found a size to be better? Yeah. So when I did this one, I made it two and a quarter inches tall. And it really kind of like took up the whole space, which I like. Right. Okay. If you're, if you're using kind of one of the wider images, you may not want to make it quite so tall. Um, yeah. One of mine is pretty wide. So I'm just going to make it like one and a half tall. Yeah. I think it really depends on the image you're working with. I tried to make them kind of squarish to fit on mugs pretty well. Um, and then are you going to use the colors that are built into the file or are you going to use different colors? <laughs> I, I'm, I like the colors you picked. Like I really do. So I think that's what I'm going to use, but feel free to change it up, right? Yeah, that's, I mean, there's so many great colors. I always try to make teal a Christmas color, so. Teal should be a Christmas color now that I see these. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, it, it's like that kind of retro Christmas sort of vintage -y sort of feel, which I like. Yeah, it's like the teal and red together. Yep. I'm actually going to change. I'm using the full of Christmas. Oh, go ahead. My iPad here, so I, you will have to follow Corey's screenshot. <laughs> Um, I'm going to actually change the green in the full of Christmas cheer to teal because everything I do is teal. So, um, but you guys can obviously use whatever color you want to use. Um, and then I'll use the lighter teal for the stars and um, red for Christmas. So for a lot of these files, when I designed them, I kept each of the pieces sort of separate, like each of the words. Um, so that way you could change them up if you wanted, but for this one, I'm doing, um, full of Christmas cheer, but I want full of and cheer to go together. So I went ahead and ungrouped everything and then attached those two pieces. So they will cut together. Um, and you can do that if you'd like, it just makes it a little easier, um, to not have to cut more than one, you know, piece and piece it together. 
All right, and making it. What are you doing? What step are you on? Um, I think I have them resized like I want them, and I attached some of my stuff. Um, not all of it. Okay. If you have a newer machine, if you have one of the three series machines, you're going to see a um, a mat load pop up, which will ask if you're cutting it without a mat or on a mat or you know using both. Um, because we're using this great um, Oracal vinyl from Heat Trip, it's Oracal, right? I think it's Caesar. Oh no, it's Caesar. We're yeah. using great Caesar vinyl um, from Heat Transfer Warehouse. I'm going to be cutting it on a mat, so I, I'm selecting on mat. But if you don't have a three series machine or a Joy, I think Joy actually says that now. Um, you won't see that screen. Yes, the Joy did just say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I've used my Joy, actually, other than just having it turned on yesterday. I so I really like using my Joy, especially for small projects, and um, this one like fits the bill for that. Totally. And this is a great um, joy project. Yes. So for those of you who haven't worked with regular vinyl before, you put it with the shiny, the color side up and the white transfer backing piece of paper down. Yep. And I'll actually put mine on the mat here. Um, so I'm using the joy mat, but of course any mat, and then you just put the like grid side down on the mat. And this mat, my joy mats are horrible. I need new mats really badly. So I'm gonna run over it with a brayer. <laughs> I love that brayer, it works yeah. so well. Great way to extend the life of your mat because um, yeah, these have definitely seen better days. So we're gonna run over that and now it's good and stuck and ready for my first cut here. <laughs> nice. My Cricut's measuring the length of my mat. Um, one of the things that the newer Cricut Design Space has, I don't know if it's on the older machines, but on the newer machines, you have to reset your material in between each cut, which at first I found really frustrating because I normally I don't craft with my Cricut and my computer right next to each other. My Cricut or my computer lives way over there and my Cricut lives here. So I found myself running across the room, um, but there is a little setting to click that you can click that says remember material settings so that it will just, you can just stand by your Cricut and load your mats without having to change the material setting each time. Okay, now I need to know where that setting is. I'm going to have to look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like just like once you select your material, then there's like a little checkbox that says remember material settings. I see it now. I, I'm so glad we have that tip because I did not know that. <laughs> it's like the most helpful thing. I mean, truly, it's probably a good 12 feet to my computer. And when you're running back and forth with all the mats, I'm just, this is ridiculous, but that material setting. So I chose premium vinyl permanent glossy as my material. Um, it's what I cut earlier with this mug and it worked really well. All right, I'm gonna hit go so it might get a little loud on my end. Yep, I'm hitting go as well. So we'll see how loud this is. And I think right, I have, if you're, I if have you're crafting with us, let us know in the comments which mugs you're making tonight. And then you can let us know like what you're gonna put in your mug. So I'm a tea drinker and hot cocoa. That's my two um, like winter time love. Yeah, you don't drink coffee, right? I do not drink coffee. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> coffee is always my go-to. I don't know how you make it through the day. I I just I do not like coffee, and I can't. I love the smell, but I can't. I just can't drink it. I'm the same way about tea. Like there are very very few teas that I can even like choke down. I just I'm just not a fan. I so love the easiest, kind of like all kinds of different teas. So I know you yeah. and a uh, friend Heidi are both like that with your, yes. with your crazy tea. So when you're removing vinyl from your mat, instead of well, you know picking it up from the corner and peeling it off, which you're, is just going to make your vinyl curl, if you flip it over and put it flat, let's see if I can do this so you can see it, and peel the mat itself away from the vinyl, it works so much easier. So my joy totally botched this cut. So <gasps> no, is it your mat? Do you think? Again. We'll see if I can get this right. I didn't pick. What setting did you pick? The outdoor glossy. I, mine says permanent vinyl, permanent glossy. Okay, that was. I just picked like premium vinyl. So I'm going to try a different one. And there's actually plenty of vinyl for tons of mugs in here, so I'm not worried about it, but. You can make about a billion mugs with the amount of vinyl that came in this set. <laughs> yes, I only have two mugs and I have tons of vinyl, but the good thing about this is I can use my other vinyl on like um, dollar store mugs or whatever, like yeah, vinyl totally. can go on anything. 
And these yeah. are actually um, sublimation mugs, if you all did not notice. So if you have like a sublimation printer or wanted to use infusible ink on them, you could do that as well. So you didn't yeah. have, to, have to use the vinyl. I like these little mugs. They're cute. I love the little camping metal mugs. It's like, that's my favorite thing. Well, apparently I'm trying a different color because it's yelling at me. This is what happens when you craft live, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I feel it like just it's good to know that to like- color, Not back to red. So we'll just <laughs> let it do that. <laughs> I feel like it's good for people to know though that like we do this all day, every day and it still messes up for us, right? Definitely. So apparently, my okay. machine seems what to be doing okay. You said you picked the premium vinyl glossy. I have premium vinyl permanent glossy, is what it says. So apparently, that is not an option with the joy. So, <laughs> <laughs> you think it cut too deep or didn't cut enough? It just some of the stuff lifted off. Is that oh, interesting? Can you see that? Yeah. Hmm. So I'm going to pull my blade out and make sure there's nothing on it. Doesn't look like it. Maybe switching machines here. Who knows? But I'm going to try the smart vinyl setting, even though it's on the mat. Good idea. Let's see what oh, happens. <laughs> So for the, for these mugs, I'm actually going to cut just like the little, using my scissors, you know, cut out just the vinyl I've used so I can weed them without wasting vinyl. This is my favorite pair of scissors and I will link to them in the comments. Um, they are micro serrated. Do you have a pair of scissors like this? No. They're Havel and they have this like tiny micro serration on them. They cut everything beautifully, but they're really good for cutting felt. Like just trimming felt. Oh, they're a dream. Wow. Okay. I have to try those then. Yes, I really like them. Like not working either. Uh oh, new machine for you. I can, I can wait. We can have every, time for everybody to well, catch up. I have a machine right here um, that I replaced the blade in yesterday. So instead of finding a new Joy blade, I'm going to switch to the machine that I put a new blade in yesterday. <laughs> that works. <laughs> The joys of live crafting, but I also have the joy of having multiple machines right here. <laughs> yep. Let's see. So do you guys, you have big holiday plans this year? Have you planned anything yet? I have planned zero things. <laughs> zero things. Excellent. <laughs> I usually generally host most of the stuff. So it's up and so it's up to me to plan it. And I haven't. <laughs> I think it's because we moved and my parents moved down the street from us, but we have the more, the better house for entertaining now. It used to be that my parents had the better house for entertaining, but I think it's now going to start falling on me. Oh, I did. I didn't mention this when I was cutting um, my vinyl earlier. You do not need to mirror this. Um, you only really need to mirror things you're going to iron. So, because we're just using transfer tape, you don't need to mirror your project. All right, I'm going to start weeding my pieces. Yeah, I'll just be behind. It's okay. Okay, I'll catch up. <laughs> <laughs> um, these pieces, you know, the, the pieces we have here do have some small, you know, the, the tops of your eyes and those sorts of things to make sure you're not missing them when you're weeding. Right. Yep. Okay. Now I'm starting all over. New machine. So we, <laughs> we talked about in our holiday or in our Halloween live premiere about our favorite weeding tools. Are you, you still like that hooked weeder, right? Yeah, and I have it out right here. So I love the one with the double hook. <laughs> So funny. I just realized like I use this weeding hook for everything. So mine's also like caked with paint because I use it for like, like if my paint, my paint, uh, craft paint, you know, bottles get kind of, you know, caked with dried glue. I'm always like, or 
paint, I'm always pulling stuff out with my weaving tool. So mine are so handy that even if, you know, like you have tape on like a box that you're opening. Yep. Stick my weeding tool through it. Totally. <laughs> use mine all the time. It's just always handy. Like they're always yeah. right there. So they get used for just about everything. And I'm like, just there's also a craft knife in there, Angie, but no, I get the weeding. No. Weeding tool. <laughs> we, uh, painted our cabinets, our kitchen cabinets in our last house. And they were from like the early eighties, right? So they're like those, the oak cabinets that are in every house from the early eighties. And the cabinets were so grimy, like from just years of not being clean. So like in the corners was black. It was so gross, but we wanted to paint the cabinets, which means we had to clean the cabinets. And I used my weeding tool to like, just pull out all the gross stuff in the <laughs> corners of the cabinets. <laughs> so, Follow me for more life tips. <laughs> so if you have anything weird that you use your weeding tools for, we would love to hear more. <laughs> I'd <laughs> love to know. Just make, make us feel less alone in using our weeding yeah. tools for <laughs> all sorts of things they weren't designed Random for. Random things that you can use weeding tools for. <laughs> I'm sure there's people out there who actually use them like a dental pick. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> a little lunch stuck in your teeth while you're crafting. Actually, so my son had braces and, you know, they had the little rubber bands and one came yep. off and he couldn't get it back on and we used a weeding tool. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> oh man, I love it. 100%. We did do that. Well, I'm not looking forward to the braces years of having to, uh, to pay for that. You have twins, so you better just hope they don't have braces at the same time. And Ryan, <laughs> my husband, never had braces. Like, he oh, my somehow... Oldest, my oldest two daughters did not have braces. Their teeth are amazing. But my yeah. youngest took after me and needed them, so. Yeah, I've had them three times. So, you know. Yeah. Good job, me. So when you're so reading, like, was, especially something... Apparently, somebody's... it is the blade oh, my joy. So we'll just go ahead and say that's the blade. And I'll just cut all this with this explorer, too. <laughs> <laughs> My, um, I'm cutting these little, these little tiny star pieces that go on the full of Christmas cheer one. And there's some pretty tiny dots in here. So just go really slowly and carefully, um, and use your weeding tool or your thumbnail. Like if you're finding pieces aren't sticking properly. Yeah. Okay. I was playing around with the, um, washi tape setting yesterday on something else I was doing. And a lot of times that helps too, if you're having trouble cutting this, um, yep. so you can washi tape more pressure or you could use washi tape and go over it twice and a lot of times it helps if you're having trouble with like the super small little bit of details um so I use yeah that. yeah i use that double cut a lot where i just hit it again and it cuts it a second time but what's really annoying is that you can't do that on smart materials right like you, there's no way to double cut smart materials which is super frustrating which we're not we using smart materials so we're good <laughs> But what we're talking about is when your Cricut machine is done cutting, don't unload the mat and just, you can hit the C again on the Explorer, the maker, and it'll go over the same area for a double cut on the joy. Um, or I guess the, yeah, on the joy you hit, um, I think it, what does it say on the screen? It says something on the screen, like either it's unload like, or, or try again or something like cut that. Again or something. Yeah. And I always hit the second button to do the second yeah. cut on the joy. It's really helpful. Like I found for a long time that my original maker just wasn't great at cutting the type of cardstock I like to use. I like that basil cardstock. Um, so I would just double cut everything <laughs> instead of like trying to find the setting that worked. I'm like, go, go again, go again. Um, my newer maker actually has, has solved that problem. So it cuts better than my old one did. But my old machine too, like I use that thing to death. <laughs> it's based yeah. on its last legs. That's why I feel like sometimes my machines just are just done. <laughs> right. I mean, we use our machines a lot. Yeah. I literally cut things just about every single day. So <laughs> yeah. I went to clean my, it was my maker for some photos <laughs> recently, just my original maker. And I was like, this thing is trashed. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> there was someone on, um, cause sometimes I'm like messing with my machine, like trying to move the star wheels over or something. And I get like dirt all over my hands and I'm like, Oh gosh, this is just embarrassing. And there was someone on TikTok, and they were like, they bought a return to machine from, um, Michael's 
and okay. they were cleaning it on their TikTok and talking about how disgusting it was. And I was like, that could totally be me if I had returned my she- machine to Michael's. <laughs> <laughs> That's my gross machine. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that is like totally my gross machine because I have to be careful not getting stuff all over my hands when I'm moving my star wheels. <laughs> that is so funny. My star wheels are like almost always pushed over. I almost never push them back unless I see a problem. I rarely do. Um, so the white wheels, if you don't know, on your Cricut machine are called star wheels. And they're all they're the like on the roller bars. That yes. like when you insert your mat, they're the little white like roller wheels when you insert your mat. And you move them over for things like, I don't know, metal, wood, anything thick. Craft foam, leather. Yeah. Anything that could imprint foil. Yeah. Like using the foil tip. And quite frankly, they're so hard to move, especially on the Explorer 2. <laughs> that I, they're so hard to move over. I rarely move them back. Except yeah. that some people get angry at me on my YouTube videos because they're not moved back. And you can see like right now I'm cutting with the star wheels all the way over to the left because I was doing yep. some engraving on this machine the other day. <laughs> if it works, like why move them back? <laughs> yeah. I have all my pieces weeded, so I'm just going to wait for you to catch right. up and talk about how we like to <laughs> use transfer tape. Maybe someone that's watching out there also had cutting issues and they're just catching up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We've got you, Carol, or whatever your name is. <laughs> yes, I had you because I also could not cut vinyl today. <laughs> I had a, um, I did like a photo shoot in my craft room last week, it was a week ago today. And I wanted to cut a project so I could actually have something to work with, you know, so she could take pictures of me crafting. And of course, I mean, I cut things all the time and what doesn't work the thing that I'm like paying the photographer a bajillion dollars to like stand in my craft room and wait for me to like try and weed this terrible vinyl that would be cut. Like, Come on. And wait for me to find a new blade. <laughs> <laughs> One more color, and then I promise we're good. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I weeded one really quickly when it came off the machine, just to make sure these cuts were actually going to be okay. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> I weeded really well. I was, I, I like this Caesar. So uh, I always fine. recommend to people to do a test cut when they're cutting unfamiliar material, and I never do it. <laughs> I'll just be honest. always recommend it. Never do it. <laughs> So you should probably do a test cut with this if you've never cut the um, Caesar <laughs> vinyl on your machine, but I, I never do. I always, and these are so small, like that's about the size of a test cut anyway. <laughs> should we do a test cut before we do a live premiere? Nah, it's No, fine. no, we should not. We should just pull our joy out. We don't know the condition of the blade or the mat and we should just go for it because that's what I do. I know. I mean, that's basically how we live our lives. Just, just make it. And if it doesn't work, that's when you panic. <laughs> well, I hope you guys are all having fun in the comments. I'm trying to think of what else. I do, it's hard for me to get in Christmas mode because technically it's still October when we're filming this. So. It it's is. Still, I was trying um, to think of like holiday questions. Actually, so I would love to hear in the comment section what holiday you celebrate. So are you a Christmas person? Or do you have another holiday that you celebrate in December? I would love to hear that. Yeah, I would love to know that. I would also love to know when you start decorating for your holiday. <laughs> because I feel like we, I am very strongly a decorate for Christmas after Thanksgiving person. Like usually I take that Black Friday day and that's kind of the like decorate for Christmas day. And then I will often leave my Christmas decorations up until Epiphany, which is January 6th, I think. <laughs> so like, I feel like that's like, you kind of get the whole Christmas season at that point. Um, so, but I know there's people who are already putting their trees up now, which to me is just bonkers, but you know, you do you. So I always try to wait until um, day after Thanksgiving. However, as a blogger, sometimes that's impossible just to let you all know that. Sometimes yeah. you have commitments or um, people need things ahead of time, that type of thing. So it gets a little bit crazy at times during fourth quarter. Yeah, but it definitely I, gets Christmassy in my craft room way faster than it gets Christmassy in my house. <laughs> yes. 
And I will also say, so when my husband and I got married, his family has a thing that it's bad luck to leave your Christmas decorations up until the new year. So they have to come down by December oh, 31st. And so I, that's just the way I've always done it because that was his family tradition. So yeah. So it's Isn't that funny the way we do things. I think I'm always too tired after Christmas and I'm like someday. And then by the time I'm ready to take it down, then I'm like, clean the entire house, put everything away, <laughs> clean every surface. I am usually super tired of Christmas decorations by the time Christmas rolls around. Like it's like in the way Over and it. it's just covering everything. So I'm usually ready anyway. So yeah, I feel like both you and I are already crafting for Christmas. I mean, clearly here, but with other things too, for our blogs that the Christmas season ends up being like four months long. And by the end, you're just like, yeah. I could use just a clean, a clean bear house. Okay. I was going to weed a little bit on oh, go for, it. for the, um, this other camera angle. So I like to start in the corner and Corey actually mentioned you should start in the corner like opposite your hand when re weeding HTV but I feel like that applies here too um yeah, no, both ways and then this actually is not weeding too bad but I just kind of weed from left to right a lot of times um and we also discussed last time whether you weed on the mat or off the mat if I was going to weed on the mat with this I probably would have added um weeding boxes around it so something where I could have left it on the mat. Um, and then both of us had these little, I have the Ivine Berry. I don't know what um, brand you have of that. Same exact one, I think. Same one, yep. it is. Same. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just really great to pick up like little bitty pieces and then you can like clean your weeding tool on it. They're super inexpensive. I've seen people use, there's like a nail polish holder and I have one of those here somewhere that fits on your finger. This one like suctions your table with just a little suction cup. Um, so I've seen people use also like a wipes container, um, which works, I don't know. And then sometimes I just take my final that I've weeded off yep. and put it sticky side up. And then as I'm weeding like these little pieces, it just sort of sticks to that portion I've already weeded. So sometimes I do that, I don't know. Any other all, all like, of those for that? <laughs> I do all those. Sometimes I'll stick that um that piece of vinyl that you have there that you're weeding on. I'll stick that on the mat so it doesn't pop up when I go to stick my little pieces on it. So I'll just stick it on the corner of the mat. That's a um, good tip. And I also stack them on my finger, like the little bitty pieces, yep. and they stick to one another on your finger. Like I think yep. there's like a million ways to do it. It just I do all hard. those ways. Yeah, like how am I feeling today? I feel like putting them on my finger. Okay. <laughs> Where is my little weeding? Like I don't know what to call this weeding weeding catcher. What is this I thing have called? No idea. <laughs> a vinyl, a vinyl catcher. Where is that? I don't know. It's across the room. I'm gonna weed on my finger. You also did a you did a TikTok or a video where you did that like super fast weeding, right? I did. I can try it. Hold on. Let's see if I can do it on this one. Okay. So it's scary since I've already so messed scary. them up. <laughs> but you just like rip it like a Band-Aid and I found it works, but I'm so scared to do it. I don't do it very often. So you just like rip it. And it, I mean, most of it came off, right? And you just sort Did of- Did it work right? No, did you like get anything that stuck to the actual- Oh, I missed the eye this time, but the little uh -uh. dot stayed. So that's super weird. That's so strange. I would have expected the dot to go. <laughs> right? Like I always have trouble with the dot. So I'll just put my eye back on there. Yeah. That's the nice thing about adhesive vinyl versus iron vinyl. It's a lot easier to fix things that have fallen off. It's much harder to do that if you've accidentally weeded an iron on vinyl piece because it doesn't stick to the carrier sheet. <laughs> like you're kind of screwy. Like I've totally done that though. <laughs> oh, I have. I've tried very hard to, to fix mistakes. <laughs> okay. So now I think all my pieces are weeded. So we want to start layering this up. Sure. What's your method? I'll, and then I'll say my method if it's different. Um, so I'm going to, I might do a couple methods. Um, I'm going to do one using parchment paper, like the parchment paper from your kitchen. Um, and then I might do another quite different method. I don't know. So tell me okay. what you're going to do and I'll decide. Well, the two methods that I would normally, well, there's kind of three methods I would use for this. I'm going to layer them all on a single piece of um, transfer tape here, which I've cut down to size, kind of the size of my project. And I'm just gonna 
put the transfer tape down, pull it up, put the transfer tape down on the next one, pull it up and put the transfer tape down on the next one so that everything is on one single sheet of transfer tape when you go to put it on your mug. You can also do them individually with three pieces of transfer tape. That works really well, especially if you um, don't line things up very well in your head. You know, like, if, I don't know, I feel like it's easier sometimes to line things up on the mug where you want them to start. Um, and then there's a third way, which I'll link in the comments, is which is using registration marks. Um, I think that's more important when you're layering vinyl that has to line up in a super specific way. <laughs> um, but I just did a blog post on this last week, this week, at some point recently, um, where I have a bunch of layers of vinyl stacked up to make a donut, but the donut has like a bite coming out of it. So you want that bite to line up, you know, exactly perfectly with your stacks of vinyl. Um, and so using registration marks, which you actually create in design space before you cut your project, is a great way to line up your vinyl. And you can actually use that method on these if you'd like, but you'll have to go back and add those in design space. Um, so yeah, so I'm starting with the little stars on mine and then I'm gonna, so I put the transfer tape on top here and then I'll use my scraper um, to really burnish the transfer tape on top here. So you can see what we've got here. And then when you're peeling it back, I prefer to peel back, like keep the transfer tape itself flat and then kind of peel back the backing sheet. Is that how you do it, Angie? Yes, I do. Yeah, um, so and then like, I was gonna say, I also, I like to use my mat again. <laughs> so like it stays. Yeah, that's a good idea. Down. And also sometimes it's all curled up, like Corey gave the tip about removing your vinyl from the mat. But if you forget to do that, or sometimes the cricket rolls, like they don't just don't lay flat for me. Um, so a lot of times I just stick them to my mat. So they lay flat as yep. I'm like trying to burnish it and pick it up. All right. That's a great, that's a great tip. And then if you have, I don't think any of these designs are layered on top of each other, but if you did, you'd always want to start with like the top layer. Um, right. so that would be my other tip if you had something like that, like yep. weren't you doing these designs. And again, when you're doing, when you're peeling back that transfer tape or peeling back that carrier sheet, make sure that you have like, get your little eyes and all your little dots. Um, do you like the Cricut scraper or do you have a different scraper that you like? I actually do use the Cricut scraper almost all the time. Do you have one of these? Hold on. I have like several and I still got the Cricut one. I like this Craftopia scraper as well that has like the felt on it. Do you have one, one of I, these? Yeah, I have one similar to that, but the one with the felt on it, I mine is from iVine actually. But yes, with the felt on it is definitely great, especially the felt, if you're using like, um, oh, like vinyl that's metallic or something, yeah. I think it gets scratched yep. and that the, um, that, uh, whatever felt keeps it from doing that. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to do this parchment paper thing. So I just really have a hard time eyeballing vinyl and Corey can just eyeball all day, but I cannot do it. <laughs> so I sit here eyeballing I it. <laughs> like most of the vinyl with my little um, parchment paper because um, this transfer tape won't stick to the parchment paper. So I can kind of like move it around and kind of locate it and decide where I want it, if that makes sense, without committing. So That's amazing. I just have a hard time getting everything lined up. So parchment paper is my friend. <laughs> I feel like, you know, most people have like, would really like that trick. I don't know. I feel like I'm just pretty good at lining stuff up on my own. So I don't know some of these tricks just because I have not found the need for them for me, but I have tricks for all the other things I'm not nearly as good at. And then my other trick would be to pull up design space beside you. So you can see how it's supposed to look. Yep. <laughs> I, I just did forget that. how things are supposed to look like, where's that eat supposed to be? Yeah. A lot of times I'll just try and line up, you know, I'm like, okay, so on mine, that F is really close to the top of the H, you know, and try and just get like one or two little reference points. Um, so I've got mine on my transfer tape here. You can see, let's see if I can get this in here. So it says full of Christmas cheer. But Angie's trick is so cool. I have to try that sometime. <laughs> I feel like you're faster than me, but I've got the well, you're using, I mean, I just eyeballed it, so. 
you have more steps. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> but I will never get it right if I don't go through all those steps, but that's okay. That's, I mean, it I mean, honestly, taking the time to do it right is the best way to have mugs that you like and last forever, right? And I'm actually kind of liking, I don't know if I've used the Caesar transfer tape before and I'm kind of liking it. I like it, yeah. I don't think, I mean, I have rolls and rolls of crickets, so I end up using that most often. I like the Craftopia transfer tape as well. Yeah, it's pretty good. And I um, I actually use the um, Duck brand, um, just the shelf liner from, yes. <laughs> from Walmart a lot. <laughs> nice. Which I one are you doing again? I can't see in your picture. I can't oh, which eat, drink, and be merry. Sorry. That's right. Oh, that's okay. I just couldn't remember which one you'd chosen. Um, that's just the one I'm doing first. Can you hear the wind blowing outside my house? I cannot. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> glad. <laughs> we're still we're at the end of that bomb cyclone that like blanketed the west. <laughs> so still very windy out there. All right, so I've got my last layer on finally. And I guess we're ready to put on mugs, right? Yep. Do you do anything to prep your mug before you put the vinyl on? I So I usually clean with rubbing alcohol and I have forgotten to bring my rubbing alcohol. So you tell me. I usually use rubbing alcohol as well and I don't have it. So I'm gonna use a lint roller. <laughs> okay. We talked about supplies we needed before we started this and both of us forgot the rubbing alcohol. So that's great. Good job, go team. Another thing you can do too, if you want to make your mug, um, you know, you can, you can put a decal on both sides if you wanted, you know, hugging a mug on both. I feel like when you buy mugs, you know, like this one was made for me, but it's got my logo on it, but it's got my logo on one side and it's got my logo on the other side. I feel like most mugs are like that. So if you wanted to double cut all of your images and do it on both sides, that would be a fun way to do it, especially if it's like a gift or yeah, and that also solves the debate. So I have all kinds of people ask me what side it's supposed to go on. And I feel like it's if you're left-handed or right-handed, maybe which one, you know, you would see. But that solves the debate. If you put it on both sides, then it doesn't totally. matter if you're left-handed or right-handed. That's true. I love mugs too. Like mugs are obviously great for our favorite beverages, like when we make them for ourselves, but they make such great gifts too, because you can like stuff them with stuff. So you could put like a little hot cocoa bundle inside with marshmallows and cocoa. Um mix and one of those candy cane stir stick things and I can also use this parchment paper to put it on the surface it's going to be a little bit harder on the rounded surface but I can lay it down on this parchment and like use that to locate and then pull the parchment out if that makes sense yes that does make sense so I actually trimmed off the top and the bottom of my transfer tapes because this one has such a lip on it at the top but I well, didn't I want it to struggling be. with that. So thank you for that tip. I'm going to take the top off of mine. <laughs> trim, it, trim it down. These are the things I learned when making the first one. Again, yeah, I just... Lori's experienced and I just show up. So I just showed up today and I'm crafting along with you all. I didn't even make a mug yet. <laughs> that, was how, that was how we did the Halloween bags, right? I just showed yeah. up to craft. One of us can just show up. And then I just press the transfer tape down on one side and then I can just kind of like work the parchment yeah, paper out and like I should have used your trick because mine was very crooked thankfully I was able to peel it off <laughs> me over here I can just eyeball it <laughs> well I like moving from left to right too if there's like um big pieces that might have bubbles in them yeah. um but and the transfer tape you know makes that a little bit easier and then actually for the next one um I have a little spray bottle of water. I could use the wet. Oh, I'd love to see that. I actually haven't done that technique and I'd love to see how yeah. it works. So that's how I can do the second one. You asked how I was going to do both of them and I just decided. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I always use my fingers when burnishing transfer tape onto or burnishing vinyl onto a mug. I find that that really works really well with the curved surface. Um, just getting, you know, getting it burnished down really well. And then when you peel back the transfer tape, you want to peel it back basically flat against the, or at least that's how I do it, like flat against the, the mug so that it doesn't pull up your vinyl when you pull it up. Yeah, that's the way I do it. Like all the way back on it. So. All the way. 
Oops, I see I pulled back my F anyway. Let's go back and reburnish. Hold on, let me see it. Let me finish mine. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not ready for you, Angie. How did you get ahead? All right. Yeah, I told you I could catch up. You, you Ta-da! Just oh, so cute. <laughs> so cute. I am full of Christmas cheer. <laughs> All right, now, second mug. Second mug. All right. Let's look at that. Which one are you going to do for your second one? Uh, it's Cocoa and Christmas Movies. Basically and I'm going to use the best night of transfer tape. So if you don't know, you can reuse transfer tape. And I do this all the time. Um, so what was I doing? I was making a ton of, um, I was put, adding vinyl to paper the other day for a party. And I had a ton of the same thing. And I used that duck brand transfer tape. And I made 20 of one thing. And I used one piece of transfer tape the whole time. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so reuse your transfer tape. <laughs> Good tip. Hot tip from Angie. Saving some money. <laughs> All right. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to change the colors of this. Oops. Oh, I cut both mine at the same time. So see, I am ahead. <gasps> I am not ahead. <laughs> That's how I got ahead. <laughs> My goodness. So I am using the Jingle Juice file and it actually didn't quite import with everything quite in the right space, which is silly. Sometimes design space just doesn't like to put things like the word jingle was just moved up a little bit, so. Yeah, so I've been noticing on SVG files, it's happening more and more lately. Yeah. With space, so I don't know what's going on, but definitely check your files when you upload them. Um, yeah, this is frustrating because I feel like I have been designing SVG files to upload to Cricut Design. And I thought I checked all of these, but, and I'm pretty sure I did. So it must mean that something is a little amiss. Yes, so I feel like it's been a little bit wonky. And we had quite a few people on the last live ask about if they bought the heat transfer warehouse bundle, where to find their SVGs. Um, so go to your account on heat transfer warehouse if you bought that bundle click your orders, click the order that would have this in it. So the mug bundle or the big bundle, if you bought it, and there should be a file in there for you to download. Um, that is a zip of all the files. So yeah, just if you're wondering. All right, well, now I have to cut mine. I'm so behind now. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, my brown cut a little deep, so it's gonna take me a minute to get this off the backing paper, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm gonna make it work. <laughs> Since we're live. I mean, honestly, everybody needs to know that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like honestly, sometimes you look at bloggers and you're like, gosh, they just do it perfectly the first time, every time, you know, <laughs> it's not true. It's called editing. <laughs> it's called editing. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of editing and like testing things over and over and over again, which How we did not testing. do because it's applied. So that's okay. All right, let's see. Oh gosh, well, like everything stuck to itself. So I wasn't paying attention where I was getting stuck down. Do you have brown on your last mug? Because I'm just wondering if this is the brown cutting deep or was my machine? Um, I am not cutting brown on my last mug. Okay. I haven't cut that brown yet, actually. I'm also We're loving so that um, lime green you picked for this one. I like it's that. fun, right? Yeah. I know I'm cutting everything all mine in like this kind of teal and red combo, but that green is great. Yes, I love the green. I'm not a huge fan of kind of that traditional Christmas green, that sort of darker, you know, foresty green. Yeah. It's not bright enough for me. <laughs> okay, even though this cut too deep, I salvaged the cocoa, yay. One of my other things that I often do is I, when I'm cutting a project with multiple mats, is I'll use two mats, I'll prep my second mat, you know, as I'm, as the first mat's cutting so that I can just go right into the machine 
when it's done. These are so small. You probably could have put like small pieces of the vinyl on one mat and did it all in one cut actually. And I, I loaded all my mats. Oh, doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing a, how to cut multiple vinyl. Yeah. Pieces. Yep. I'll link that tutorial as well. <laughs> See, Corey has a tutorial for everything. <laughs> I have a tutorial for everything and Angie has a video for everything. Yeah, pretty much the combo here. <laughs> together we make one amazing blogger <laughs> but i have not done that tutorial yet on the uh multiple like sheets of vinyl i don't think i have a snap mat video i guess so that's close enough yeah snap mat would work i have a, I have a tutorial for that as well we all these yeah, things. so if you use your it's ipad or iphone right it's ios yeah yeah um you can use snap mat which basically you, like you take a picture of the mat and then you can move each around to like different it's good for using scraps I feel like or like fussy cutting fabric or something like that um yep. just really great for stuff like that so, I find I mean, people like, are always amazed like you can do what <laughs> I know it's really helpful for using up like you know we talked in our last video about all the different scraps that we have it, it's not mad it's so good for just kind of using all those different little scraps of things yeah, so I was thinking about that the other day because you said you save paper scraps too. And I am horrible about saving paper scraps. I throw most of my paper away. So I like, I need to get inspired to make a paper scrap bin now. So yeah, I just use like a scrapbooking bin. It's probably not the best, you know, way to do it. Actually, yeah. I have like eight. I mean, like I have a lot of paper scraps because I really like paper crafting. Um, I guess I don't do as much paper craft. So maybe that's why I've just never. Yeah saving time. I mean, if it's I used like, to do, I do, but I mean, I just like making paper flowers and pinwheels and party, you know, banners and all that kind of stuff. I just, yeah, it's one of my favorites. I feel like I'm so behind you now. <laughs> all right. I got to weed my, <laughs> my mug here. Well, so, I'm getting some of these to stick, so it's okay. What are some of your other like favorite holiday traditions? And if you're watching, like what, like tell me some of the things that your family or or you do when you're when the holiday season rolls around. Um. So, one of my favorite things. So you get like so many big, huge holiday meals, holiday parties, that type of thing. So my mom does. She hosts Christmas Eve every year. Mm -hmm. And we just do appetizers. Like it's just Ooh. a whole layout of appetizers. And that's like always been one of my favorite things because it's not like a huge, you can make it a huge meal, but it's not, doesn't have to be. Yeah. And, and I just like snacks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love apps? <laughs> yes. I love that. That's actually, that's a fun idea. We had a tradition that we actually like stopped doing just a couple of years ago when it became, when it started to fall more on me for the holidays and not my mom. But when my grandpa died, when I was five, my, and I think it was in November. So my grandma was pretty upset, you know, obviously she lost her husband and didn't want to do Christmas. And so my mom decided to do um, like something completely different for Christmas that year. And we literally did it until I was 37 or something. Um, which was my mom would cook Indian food on Christmas day. Um, that was awesome. Yeah, she lived in India um, for five years. And um, to the point where like, I mean, my mom being for, you know, your average white lady <laughs> got really good at um, cooking an Indian meal. She had a tandoori oven in her backyard and, um, and so, yeah, so that was kind of our tradition for a long time was to have Indian food instead of a traditional Christmas, Christmas meal. Um, did she bring that up? She recently moved, right? So did she bring yeah, that Yeah, she moved up here. So we, we didn't bring it. And so that's kind of one of the reasons that we've changed the, um, the tradition. And, um, and I think Ryan and I were trying to get back more to like our, you know, a tradition for our family now, you know? Yeah. So, but I think she'll still probably cook some sort of Indian food on like Christmas Eve that might like change now maybe not such a giant spread but yeah I feel like eventually we moved to like where I host and you know like we started our own traditions type of thing um yep. rather than like going to our parents and that type of yeah thing. yeah 
I mean, my mom's a much better cook than I am, so I'm not sure why she wants to come to my house, but. <laughs> <laughs> so this time I'm just using the grid lines on this paper and sort of like eyeballing it more like Corey did. Um, I love transfer tape with grid lines. So that's like, I can't hardly do the transfer tape without grid lines. And the other day I was um, experimenting with something and wondering what the best transfer tape would be for it. And I tried transfer tape, like that paper tape that you can't see through, it's not clear. I could not, could not do it. I couldn't <laughs> do the project. <laughs> I have a huge roll of it, but I only use it for masking projects with my Glowforge. Like it has to be clear and it almost has to have grid lines or I'm like useless. So like, how would you even like, how would you even line up a project if you can't really see know. where it's going? So if you have a favorite transfer tape, tell us about it. And if you like the stuff that isn't clear, tell us how to use it. <laughs> a, give us your best tips. So when I was weeding this, my little like swoopy swoop on my jingle juice got a little off. So I'm going to try and put it back on here. I have to get really close though to my table. So it looks really funny on video where I'm like trying to figure out where it goes. <laughs> well, I missed some of my little weeding lines. So <laughs> some of the little bitty pieces on my little mug. So I was fixing that really quickly. <laughs> See you guys. Almost done with all my layers here. I have one more layer. There we go, that's better. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm catching up. <laughs> Well, this is another brown layer. So we're going to see if this cut too deep. And so I'll probably be here fiddling with that for a while. <laughs> Did it cut, like cut, cut through the liner? It cut just a little bit into the liner. So the liner is wanting to like peel back just a little bit, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, and just leave like a little like thin oh, no. film on it, which means the vinyl won't stick correctly. So I just have to yep. watch to make sure that all comes off. So I'm I actually had a little, when I made the mug before this, I had a little tiny bit of that, just tiny on the teal, the dark I teal. Got it. So maybe watch and make sure, it, depending on the cut settings, that it didn't go too deep. Yeah. And I have mine weeded and on my transfer type. So I'm ahead of you now. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on it. I just realized I need to have room for both of these little jingle bells. I'm going to find my water bottle though. Let's see. So I'll do the wet vinyl application method this time. And I just have like some water in a spray bottle and I just use like a drop of just soap, like super, super small. And then I'll need a paper towel and, or I can use a rag. I have a rag right here. This is such a cool method. Like everybody really pay attention to this because if you have a hard time getting like things lined up with a piece of vinyl, this is such a good trick. Yes, and it's also really great if you have like large pieces that are just like the, like a huge piece of vinyl and you have trouble like getting little bubbles on it. An another great way to do that. So, um. yeah. Okay, so we'll need our mug here and you wanna make sure the mug is clean still. Um, and same thing, I usually use rubbing alcohol, but you know, it's a live video and you forget things. <laughs> So I just spray the surface and this is only good for like hard surfaces. So I use it on like, this is metal. Um, I've used it on um, oh, like a metal tray, glass mugs, that type of thing. And then just a light spray on the back of the vinyl. And now I can put this on the mug and it just sort of floats around and you can like locate it, right? So it's just like floating on the mug and I can be like, hold it up, see what looks good, make sure it's straight. And then once I'm happy with it, you just start using your scraper and like pushing the water out. And that's where your rag comes in. And you'll wanna do this for like a couple of minutes just to like let all the water come out. And so I just keep pushing like a squeegee and then drying it off. And I'll just keep doing that for like a couple minutes here while Corey gets everything on her transfer tape. <laughs> I just think it's such an amazing trick because you'd think that like getting the vinyl wet would just ruin all of the adhesive properties of the back of the vinyl, but it doesn't. Yeah, so it is the method that they use to put vinyl on cars and things like that so that yep. they get no bubbles in it. So it's like the same concept, just like a much, much smaller scale. scale yeah, it's so cool. 
All right, so I've got my pieces lined up on my vinyl. I just, or on my transfer tape. I did this exactly the same as I did the other one. You have all the methods and I'm like, I'm just gonna use my one method. Well, I didn't even think about this method till we got started, so. <laughs> it's such a good one. Like it really is just a cool, a cool trick. So I've got all my, and then I've, or all my vinyl on my transfer tape and I've trimmed it down so that it will fit on my mug. need some jingle juice yeah we could have done this later in the day hey hey <laughs> this is this was literally the last day that we could do this though for until like february because the, my construction project starts tomorrow yeah so and, we didn't want saws in the background we had to film oh, in october <laughs> yeah staging area for all of their construction that we're doing in our house which you can i'll link to my instagram and you can <laughs> learn more about our giant construction project um, but this giant staging area where they're going to store all their stuff is just on the other side of this wall. So there was just no, no way. Gosh, these mugs turned out cute. So cute. And I'm just kind of testing this to see if it's good and stuck. And as I peel it back, like there may be some extra water. And I'm just sort of rubbing that off. I'm peeling back my transfer tape, just making sure I'm getting everything here. And yeah, so that means that all of our holidays this year are going to have the backdrop of construction. <laughs> oh yeah, so you won't be done before the holidays, will you? No, it's supposed to end at the end of January. <laughs> so you can have your Christmas tree like decorated with uh, construction supplies. <laughs> Power tools. <laughs> Power tools for Christmas. <laughs> so we, we had to move out of basically the top floor of our house, right? Which is where both of our bedrooms are, plus where the boys play. And so we moved everything downstairs into what now amounts to basically a one bedroom apartment at our house, right? So there's like extra furniture where it doesn't belong. Like my old hope chest is like in the living room instead of the guest bedroom because we had the boys in the guest bedroom and you know, it's a mess. And I'm like, how am I gonna fit a Christmas tree in here too? <laughs> like all my Christmas decorations because it is chaos in our house right now. On top of the hope chest. <laughs> yeah, right, I was like, it's the only place. I bought a pre-lit Christmas tree. I mean, I really like, I always, I do like going and cutting down a Christmas tree but we had a tippy Christmas tree a couple of years ago and I got really mad at it. So I just went and bought a lit Christmas tree but it has 5,000 lights and it's truly magnificent. It is the best Christmas, <laughs> Christmas oh, tree. Oh, wow. It's so fun. Look at these cute, these all turned out so cute. Yes, so there's mine. And I basically got all the water off. So I just kept like blotting it and even oh, like good. pressing a little bit after the transfer tape was off and it feels good. And I'll, so one thing I wanted to mention that I always find that people do incorrectly is when you put vinyl on a mug, 72 hours before yep. you use this mug or put it in the dishwasher, dishwasher. In, wash it by hand, anything, 72 hours, please. <laughs> yeah, just the adhesive time to basically cure on, yeah. the, on the background. I also tend to hand wash mugs like this. I, I know that you can put them in a dishwasher, especially if you've let them, you know, cure, but I still tend to hand wash them. People are always asking too, if you put like Mod Podge over anything, do you do anything like that? So I tested that actually. I did the dishwasher safe Mod Podge, put it over the top of vinyl. I let it cure the full 28 days and it performed exactly the same as just the permanent vinyl by itself. And, wow. and I did the dishwasher like 30 times. Oh so gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. So I don't think it's worth the time. Like in my opinion, I don't think that the whole Mod Podge cycle is worth the time, especially the 28 days. So that's my yeah. opinion. I mean, 28 days from now, it's going to be I don't know, some other season, right? <laughs> you will need to start your jingle juice mug way early if you're going to use the Mod Podge <laughs> method over the top. <laughs> All right, friends, I think we are about done here. We had such a fun time crafting with you and chatting with you in the comments. I know this because we had a lot of fun chatting with you for the Halloween comments. So I can actually say that with experience now that we will have fun chatting with you because we had a great time last time. Um, again, everything you need to make this project is linked below. I'll link to all of Angie's social if you don't already follow her on YouTube. If you don't, I don't know why because she's 
amazing on YouTube. Um, I'll link to all of her other social accounts. I'll link to all of mine. And um, yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them on this video. We want we want crafting to be fun. We don't want you to just hit a bunch of roadblocks and then not be able to solve your problems. So we're happy to answer your questions. And yeah, have a very merry holiday season. Thank you. Bye.